this video, I'll be going through the Criterion C section of my personal project report that manages for me a 24 out of 24. So I started off with a sort of summary of new knowledge and insights that I gained through my personal project. And it's best not to include any factual insights, basically any insights that you could easily gain through a Google search. Because for me especially, I created a book on golden proportions. So these types of insights have already been answered by the product itself. So generally, you'd want to include more debatable insights. So what I, the way I structured my paragraph is that I mentioned what I had known and thought before, what I had thought after, um, what I found out through the research, and then my personal insight on what I had thought. So what I thought before was that the golden proportions is the most solidified concept and that it was able to be mathematically proven so there was definitely no room for doubt. However, the more I researched, I found out that there were several misinterpretations and misconceptions about the idea and that a lot of people had tried to debunk the golden proportions and mentioned that it's a myth. So after that, I gave my own personal insight what I thought based on the knowledge I had gained. So I even admitted myself that the application of golden proportions may have been quite a stretch, the people forcing the concept to fit. And then I mentioned what I had learned, the knowledge I gained. Through this process. And then I developed as a knowledgeable person. One thing to take note of is to always try to include ID learner profiles here and there because it is part of marking criteria. So here I include knowledgeable and then I mentioned how this ID learner profile helped me to develop as a learner. So I mentioned that it helped me develop my understanding on the essence of discovery and that I discovered the importance of the idea of debating because the world is still in the middle of discovery and that as you go through this process of debating, more pro information will be brought out to the light for more discovery. Moving on to deeper knowledge and understanding of the global context team. One thing that you can use to structure your answers is you can explain the real life applications of your product itself and your research and explain how it's connected to the global context. So for me, what I mentioned that the more that golden proportions are discovered will be the creation and spread of this knowledge. And this will allow mankind to become more capable of applying this knowledge for technical innovations on larger scales for the stability and aesthetics of the project, of products. So you can see that I use the word technological innovation so that I could later on connect it to scientific and technical innovation, which is my global concept. So I use real life applications for my research and connected it to my global context. And moving on to the challenges faced and solutions developed to meet the challenges. One thing to take note of is there's no need to have many challenges because as you can see, I only really included one main challenge, but I managed to make it a very meaningful challenge and explained it well. So that was probably how I managed to score for this part of the criteria. So the things I included in this paragraph as a summary is I included what the challenge was, I explained why it's a challenge. I mentioned how I overcame that challenge. And what was learned as a result of going through this challenge. 
So if we look at my paragraph, we can see that first, what's my challenge is that is the confliction of my convictions. And just to explain, I believe that gold importance for a present and a certain application. I often came across claims and reasonings that would debunk that fact and which stirred up more confusion on whether I should have included that, that application in my book or not. So that's why, what challenge I had, why it's a challenge. And how I overcame it was through the interview with my mathematics teacher. Through this interview, I included that it doesn't matter whether, whether my information is 100% true or not, because the point of research is to be able to create and open a debate and lead to future research and the gain of knowledge itself so that the concept could be effectively utilized in technological innovation. So here I just connected it to my global concept once again. And you can see I mentioned the interview here. I made a link to Criterion B section. It's good to be able to connect back to your previous criteria rather than thinking of each criteria on its own because it's all a process. It's all just continuing like that. And then just a final conclusion on what I managed to learn. I learned the fundamentals of research, discovery, innovation, and just what actual research and discovery is. Moving on to the impact of the project on my future learning. Some things that you could be talking about in this paragraph would be a diploma program. You could be talking about university courses, your career. And generally, the way you can structure this answer is because they mention the impact of the project on, my, on your future learning. You could be applying the skills that you mentioned in the Criterion B section. So for me, those skills were research and world management skills. As you can see, I'll have applied in this paragraph. So you can see that this understanding of research, research skills, assists me and I must work on projects such as IAs, my diploma program, and my work career. It would allow me to transfer and utilize my skills attained and do a new method of self-management, self-management skills, become more balanced, so able to allocate my time properly. I got to realize the importance of good intellectual, intellectual, physical, emotional balance. And this personal well-being improved my concentration, focus, learning ability, and general focus. And just as a final conclusion, I, you can also sort of say that Learning is something that persists daily. It happens every day. It's a never-ending process. So it's not like it ends after you finish your university course. So I sort of just ended it with, I believe that learning never ends for as long as one lives. So I will be able to use these skills and knowledge for the rest of my life. And then here, what you can do is, you can show, depending on what your product is, if my product is a book, I can't really show each page. And since I already submit the book, there's actually no need to show each page. I just showed some sample pages, but of course, it depends on your product. If your product is one where you can entirely display your product in one image or something of the sort, then you can display the entire product. And one more thing to notice is that the product is separately submitted, separate from the report. So there's no need to focus too much on the clarity of the images. So size is not really much of an issue. It's okay if it's not that clear. Because even mine, you can only really see it if you zoom in. And then moving on to the product evaluation which will be done through the usage of surveys. So I created a survey and I sent it to my peers. As I mentioned before, it's good to at least have 20 respondents for your surveys. Best to be 21, sort of an odd number.
And here I just gave a short excerpt of my survey just to save space. And just an idea on the type of questions that I asked, you can just see these examples. There are there were all pretty much yes or no questions, but I made the questions very specific in accordance to my success criteria because I would have to use this the survey results in order to compare my product to my success criteria and determine the strengths and weaknesses of my product. So what I did was that I gave my a very detailed question, ask yes or no. But if the respondents chose no, I gave an answer option where they would have to explain why it's a no for them so that I would be able to include it as a way to improve my product later on. And then moving on to success criteria, actually you can see if we were to take this question as an example, it's directly connected to this success criteria. And this question is connected to this success criteria. That's how I created my questions, all based on my success criteria, because that is what that's the only way to determine whether your product was successful or not. And then, so you have your results, you have everything, you just create a table sort of like this, and you determine for each success criteria what whether what the strengths related to that success criteria are. So the strengths, for example, this one, most of my respondents agreed that cover page is visually attractive, just like sort of a summary of this graph itself. And a weakness, a weakness this necessarily doesn't have to be a weakness because you can see a lot of my spaces are mostly strengths. There's very limited weaknesses. So just having at least two would be a good thing as long as they're meaningful weaknesses. There's no way to actually force weaknesses. But if there is a weakness, you would have to include what the weakness is, why is it a weakness, and how the weakness can be improved. What's the benefit of improving that weakness? And you generally just give a general summary, go through it all like that. And for some success criteria, for example, this one has minimum of 50 pages. This is an objective success criteria. So it can be determined even without a survey, whether it's a strength or weakness. So I can obviously see my book has 68 pages. I don't need a, uh, an interviewee to tell me that the success criteria has been determined because it's not subjective. And after you go through for all this, the final thing is an overall appraisal of the process in completing the personal project and the sales. So take note, this is not only about your results, but it's also about the process of completing because examiners like to look at the process more so than the actual results. As long as you can justify your results, that will still get you a high grade if they're not expecting a perfect product. That's why you have criteria C to begin with. So what I wrote for my strength is I was able to meet most of my success criteria to a satisfactory level. This is about the results. And then I was also able to improve my ability to use digital software by editing images and creating diagrams. I was able to build my ability to stick to a project for a long time, gain resilience, and found several methods to stick with something till the very end. So these are all sort of more personal, like, improvements in terms of skills. So they're more about the process. So it's good to include a mixture of both when you're talking about your strengths and weaknesses. As for my weaknesses, here you mostly mention what could have been improved. So one main weakness was the scope of the information gathered. 
And this is mostly because there's a lot of speculations and discussions on each application of golden proportions that I included in my book. And because these discussions often involve PhD professors and all that, a lot of experts, I decided not to include it. But it made me feel as if I did not actually accomplish my learning goal. But then, after enough, I realized that for my level and level of grade and age, I so I would have not been able to accurately comprehend the discussion to begin with. So I was able to do well considering my age and skill level. And I also mentioned as I got older and gained more experience, I would be able to create a higher quality innovative product that would be able to enact this idea. So you mentioned the weakness and you sort of ended on a positive end note in which you can you can connect it to future ideas or plans. And finally, for the conclusion, become a more reflective person. This is another IB learner profile. Able to give thoughtful considerations to my own learning process experience. Assess and understand my strengths and weaknesses academically and personally. And you mentioned here did whether you meet, met your learning goal or not. But this project brought about another learning goal that I can look forward to achieving in the future. You can just give a sort of one line conclusion like this on for future learning or any future improvement idea that you would possibly like to make later on. Yeah, and that's the end of the video as well as my entire personal project report. It ends here exactly 15 pages. Thank you for watching.